All I want to know is who did my hair today? There, if I put my glasses on top. I'll probably look at this video while I'm editing and I'm going to say to myself, what were you thinking today? First things first, I'm drinking my favorite butterfly jasmine tea in my Lost Wages coffee mug. That's right, tea in a coffee mug because I like to break all the rules. I'm a rebel, what can I say? It's Tuesday, May 27th. Yeah, I have to look at my agenda. It's May 27th, it's one o'clock in the afternoon and it is so overcast. I hope that you can see me well. I'm assuming that you can see me because I can see myself in the monitor and that's how it works. The leaves are full in the trees and that is blocking whatever light is happening outside. So, but I'm, I'm, I'm thankful for today's weather because it was really hot and humid. That created a problem when I filmed because the noise was too loud so I had to close the windows. Why am I even telling you this? I don't want... Smoothie time. I just got my smoothie delivered by Xander. You see, again, I like to mix. I'm drinking smoothie out of a beer glass. So good. Did I ever explain to you the story about the smoothies? I think I did, so I won't. But anyways, Xander, who is um, my daughter's better half, brings me um, homemade smoothies every day. And they're green because he puts a lot of avocado. Let's get down to business. I have started receiving postcards from you guys. Yay! Makes me so happy. Uh, this is from last week. I haven't had a chance to go this week. The first one is from Linda from Colorado. And she sends me this um, postcard from Old Fort. Old Town Fort Collins. Sorry about that. And um, I'm not going to read you the whole thing, but it's pretty cool. She says that she actually studied at Université de Montréal. Really cool. Small world, huh? It looks like a shopping area. Old town. Must be fun to visit. The other one is from Alaska. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? The Northern Lights. Um, I have to tell you a funny story about the, the Aurora Borealis. I have a hard time pronouncing this. Um, when I was young, we used to have a cottage up north and it was right in front of a beautiful lake. And in the winter time, the lake was completely free, so we were able to walk on the lake. My brother, who is almost seven years older than me, always had a fascination for the sky and um, uh, UFOs and all that stuff and I remember one night in the not in the middle of the night but 10 o'clock 11 o'clock I guess he brought me to the middle of the lake and we both laid down on the snow and we looked up at the sky and I still remember to this day to that side of the lake there was green lights in uh, the sky and I was I was both um, amazed and scared. It is so strange. It's bigger than life. It's just probably the most amazing thing that I've ever seen in terms of nature. And uh, Danny proceeded to tell me a whole bunch of stories about UFOs and then I ran home and that was my story. <laughs> but um, this is absolutely gorgeous. So this one is from Joanne and Brooke Ashley. Oh yes. Okay so Joanne is uh, I guess the mother and she's saying that her nine-year-old daughter also watches so hey Joanne hey Brooke that is pretty cool she's from the city of Kenai 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 <laughs> it's spelled K-E-N-A-I Kenai Alaska maybe anyways thank you so much so these are my first two postcards uh, that I'm going to put in my new album. I have yet to make it, but I will. The uh, second thing I want to show you is an art journal page that I did. And this page I did not film completely. I'm only going, I've only filmed uh, what I added when I came home. But it's a page that I did during a class. I attended a class given by my friend Giselle. She does that mixed media classes at the store. And this is a true example of following or letting the work dictate the finished product. So it was, the class was on distress paints. She always has like a specific technique or product uh, showcased in her workshops. So this one was about distress paints and we were told to create a background and just like let the paint do its job. And these paints are awesome because they're so, I love how they grab onto the paper 
and I love how they react to the water and I also like the fact that they are matte. Sometimes it's fun to have something matte, sometimes it's fun to play with golden. There's a lot of plastic in the golden, or polymer I should say, in the golden paints, but this one is a different medium and it's fun to be able to play with all of these. But the distress paints, they are, oh, there's so much fun. So I created the background and I, I used, um, to start off with, I used, you know what, I'm going to show you. Uh, there. <laughs> I'm going to show you there right now. Alright, so here is the page and uh, like I was saying in the intro, our focus was on distress paints and I love, love, love how that paper reacted to the paint. So of course, at one point in time this was very uh, f much flooded with water. I really, really let the paints run into each other. Of course, I created a lot of drippage by banging my book on uh, the table. Then I let it dry and while this was drying we created those things. Uh, these circles were supposed to be flowers so let me just zoom in. So we had a each a piece of mixed media paper and I stamped some text and some other things. I'm sure you can see the text behind here. And then we were told to create um, flowers using circles with different colors and that's what I did. And then we took um, <laughs> is also funny. Uh, she brought in her crystal glasses that she was not using and we were dipping those uh, glasses in black paint to create uh, a nice contrast. I love, 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 love how these uh, circles turned out. I, they're just yummy. They're just absolutely yummy. And I added uh, gesso around them. I actually dipped each circle uh, on its side in the gesso because uh, I wanted a thick border around these what I call pods now. So, like I said, they were supposed to be flowers. The sample that she had brought in had these um, circles kind of like uh, laid down on her page and then she'd made stems and then, you know, all kinds of good stuff and her page was incredible as usual. And my first reaction was when I saw these green things uh, going on my page, I thought, well, hmm, maybe they could be trees and then I will put my flowers down on the ground. So I took my doodling pen, my permaball doodling pen, and I just doodled trees. But I was somehow seeing those barren trees. I didn't see trees with leaves. And that was fine. I'm, I was okay with that. And then I glued down the circles, uh, which at the time, like I said, they were supposed to be flowers. And I thought, okay, so the flowers are kind of like growing on the ground. And this could be like a spring-ish kind of uh, page. But this morning when I opened my book, it spoke differently to me. Oh, and I, I also added some uh, white specks of, of uh, paint on the page. So this morning, somehow, when I looked at it, I saw this page in a whole different way. In a whole different way. So here's my interpretation. What I see now is those white dots are energy. And they are transformed somehow in these gorgeous, vibrant balls of energy. Very colorful, very positive. It's a very positive page, even though the trees are bare. So I went on Pinterest and I, because I want, I want to write a quote in there, but I wasn't sure what to write. And I went on Pinterest, of course. This is my main source for quotes now. And I just typed in quotes, energy. And I found this amazing quote by Albert Einstein. It's part of the big paragraph, but I just, I'm just gonna write like the first sentence. It says, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. I'm learning a lot about energy these days. I'm uh, reading about it and it fascinates me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write the quote here in a very messy way, except for the word energy. I want the word energy to really stand out.
page makes me so happy. I feel like those energy balls are coming towards me. They're dancing. It's pretty in my head. It's funny how the work takes a different direction than what it was intended. These were supposed to be flowers and now I don't see them as flowers. Anyways, so that was what I had to share with you today. After I finish editing this video, I'm going to finish my week one of Donna Downey's 48 weeks class. I fixed my pages. Oh, oh, someone left in the comments section that apparently if you use uh, masking tape in the middle of your book, eventually with time, the glue that is used for masking tape or to create masking tape in the factory will dry out and the masking tape itself will uh, fritter. That kind of sent me in a panic. That person was suggesting that I cut strips of paper and use um, a glue, like I guess collage podge or gel medium to glue down in between uh, or in the middle of my pages. Unfortunately, I have gone ahead and added masking tape throughout my entire book and also throughout uh, the one that I use for the 48 weeks classes. So it's too late for now. I can always like rip them, but um, I think it will create a problem in the big uh, journal, the big moleskin. I don't want to rip anything. So just to let you know, you know, in case you are thinking of going ahead and putting um, masking tape in your book, you might want to reconsider. All right, gotta go. Uh, hopefully I will come back sometime this week to show you more things in the meantime. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below and I will see you later. <gasps>